Hey everyone, hope you all doing fine. I want to uh, just show some cast iron that I have here and uh, just say a few things about them. What I'm getting ready to do is I have a new lodge cast iron pan been sitting out for a while you can see there's some rust on it I'm gonna take care of that rust get rid of that and also if you look on the inside these most all these new cast iron pans they have a very rough surface on the bottom which I don't particularly care for so I'm gonna smooth that out right over here I have an old Wagner it's not that old it's 1960s or at least after 1960 you can tell that because anything after 1960 I don't know if you can see it there you go barely it has made in USA on it but if you look at this that's got a smooth bottom smooth inside makes much better non-stick same with this this here is an old lodge this one was made between 1940 and 1960 lodge you can tell right on the heat ring at 12 3 and 9 it'll have those indents also the stamping on it number eight and the SK stands for skillet there's also no made in USA markings on it so it was made before 1960 and somewhere around 1940 is when they started putting those indents in the heat ring but again, on the inside, it was actually made with a smooth bottom, no texture. This one is pitted. This one here had over a quarter inch of rust on it. Been sitting out and very neglected when I got it. But now it's cleaned up and it does a real good job. The other thing I wanted to show you, and I love these little things, has a cheap little cast iron pan with it. They don't cost much, but these things are great, especially if you like to go backpacking, camping, for one person. It's a great way if you want to play with some uh, cast iron pans and get started. Excellent little thing, very light. They're nice, they're probably made in Taiwan or China or something like that, I'm not really sure. I don't see your mark on that one yet. I haven't opened it. Here's one I got last year. This thing here is awesome. It is just the right size for a piece of bread. So it makes uh, excellent grilled cheese sandwiches. Um, the lip on the side is big enough. So if you want to make yourself one piece of French toast at a time, it is awesome. Somewhere around here, it should be stamped where it was made but I don't see it anyway the kids <laughs> the kids love using this one next thing I have and this one here is unmarked as well but this one is very old and uh, my daughter my daughter loves, this is perfect for frying an egg in. She uses this one all the time to fry her eggs in. And again, this one here is, uh, still has the heat ring on it. I haven't figured out what it is yet. It's not marked. Um, I do believe though, it, it, 
Yeah, I have no idea what this one is, but it's a nice little pan. And this here is great too for backpacking, for camping. It's awesome. But what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take this new lodge pan. I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna sand it down smooth and there's several ways you can do it. You can do it by hand. I'm gonna use a grinder with the sanding wheel on it, but you can use a belt sander. You can use whatever you can to get in here, a little corner sander, a finish sander, whatever. You can use whatever you want and that's just me. I personally find that they work out better if they have a smooth bottom and smooth sides. And this one was not pre-seasoned to begin with. So it's not a big deal. I can take all that roughness off. I think I'm going to do the same thing with that. Then I'm going to season them. Now I don't believe I'm going to take you through the whole process for the simple fact I have no one to hold the camera for me. So we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like once I have it sanded down. Okay, we're back. Now, it's only been about 10 minutes. And there's the sanding of that new lodge. And that's not bad. That'll work. Now, I did open up that and I pulled out this little pan and if you can see it's the same thing on the inside and we got the little bumps if you uh ever put your hand against a spray-in bed liner that's about what that feels like this one has been pre-seasoned but what we're gonna do we're gonna do the same thing if i can find something small enough to get in there because <laughs> That's not a very big pan. But anyway, I'll bring you back when we're done. Okay, we're back. And there you go. That's the best I could do with that little tiny one. Again, that's the uh, outside of it that has the bed liner basically on it. And there's the inside. Nice and smooth. Now, what I need to do next, and believe me, this will be one of the very few times that these pans ever see this. They're going to get washed in hot, soapy water. I shouldn't say hot. A very warm, soapy water uh, with dish detergent. It is very, very rare that any of these pans see dish detergent. Cast iron is very porous if you take one of these pans you set it in your sink full of uh, dish detergent and especially if you leave it set there to soak all you're going to taste is dish detergent for the next month or so if these things once they get seasoned one very very little will stick to them two hot water Hot boiling water. Keep the pan hot. Add hot water to it. It'll burn everything off. Everything will come right out. And the nice thing is, get yourself a metal spatula. A thin metal spatula. Scrape the bottoms. You're not going to hurt them. If you want to wash them, don't use an SOS. You can use steel wool, but not anything impregnated with detergent. Personally, I use a metal spatula and then I use a green scrubby and just let the hot water let them clean themselves. And any little bit that actually does end up sticking, a green scrubby with no soap on it will work. That's it. I'll bring you back in a few after they're seasoned. Okay, we're back in the house, and um, I got the two pans 
sitting on the burners here because I just washed them, dried them out, but I want to make sure that all the water evaporates from them. This one on the back, I don't even have the burner turned on, that's just the vent for the oven. Uh, the one on the front, I have it on low. And I do want them to heat up just a little bit, just till they get fully warm to the touch, where you can still hold it without burning yourself, but it starts to become a little bit uncomfortable. Now what I have also, and I'm working on the uh, third seasoning for this one, is I have an old skillet right over here. This one here also was another one that was just so covered in rust, it was unbelievable. I don't know, maybe somebody can tell me what this one is. But yeah, all right, now this one here is nice and warm because that's about as long as I could hold it. Yeah, and that one there was just sitting on the vent for the oven. I have the oven set right at about yeah, 375. And what I'm gonna do is once these heat up, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on them, then wipe them down, wipe all the excess oil off, and put them in the oven for about an hour. And when I get a chance to do this, I will bring you back. Okay, this one's heated up enough. I can still touch it, but it is very warm. So what we're gonna do, and you can you can use whatever oil you would like. You can use bacon fat, you can use butter. Um, do not use 10W40 or WD40 or Mr. Ranch or anything like that. It has to be food grade. But this is what I normally cook with, so this is what I'm gonna season them with. Just rub some on and cover everything to include the handle and yes it's warm it's warm but that helps it absorb the oil now we want you to get the first coat on since this is our first attempt at seasoning it especially the inside you want to you want to wipe that oil off that you just put on real quick like that now the second one we're gonna do we're gonna add a little bit that was way too much but we'll go ahead and do that same thing we're gonna wipe this down and we're gonna wipe the handle we're gonna wipe the outsides I'm going to do the same thing to this I did to that one. I'm going to get a fresh piece of uh, paper towel. A lot of people tell you use a non-lint rag, which is the best thing to do, but I don't have any non-lint rags to use, so I'm using paper towel. And I'm going to wipe off all this excess oil. Then when I put them in the oven, which is set to 375, I'm going to turn them upside down. That way if I don't get all the oil off of them, it will not pull and make sticky parts. So I will bring you back when that's done. Okay, we're back. Now what I want to show you is, you notice it's not as bright silver anymore. What we want to see is we want to start to see that nice copper color. And once they come out, you just repeat. 
can let them cool off enough again so that they are warm enough that you can't hold on to them but cool enough so you don't burn yourself and you keep doing this uh, that's the first time I have to do it at least two more times but basically it's the same process oil them wipe the oil off put them back in the oven for about an hour at 350-375 turn the oven off let them cool down pull them back out oil them again wipe them off put them back in upside down With this one here that one is about the third time I've done it. So we're going to do it one more time with the other two. But that's it for today. And that's it. I hope this helps you all out. Um, you know, in future videos, I will show you all the pens. But yes, they should start getting that nice bronze color. And then eventually, they will turn black. Anyway, you all have a good day.